This is Mrs. O'Neill for Chapter 5, Section 1, Part 2, Quantum Mechanical Model and Atomic Orbitals. You're going to be able to describe what the quantum mechanical model, boy is that a mouthful, de uh, determines about the electrons in that atom and how these sublevels in the energy levels differ from each other. You should have watched that intro information on, oh look at that, same title, Quantum Mechanical Model. I'm going to go through these notes again kind of quickly. So the quantum mechanical model is just going to give us our most most current model of what the atom looks like. You already saw that the, 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 the idea of the atom and what it looks like has changed over the years, so now this is going to be the most current model. You probably learned about that shell model, and you learned about how there was two electrons in the first shell. We're going to call them energy levels now, because electrons have energy. So we have two electrons in the first, eight in the second. You should know that there are how many in the third? Hopefully you came up with 18, and how many in the fourth? 32 and that's going to be real important later on in these uh, in these notes so we replace that with what's called this again it's just the theory this most theoretical um, idea of what the atom looks like gave us a nice flow chart as he always does then he talked about Kolmbach's law and Kolmbach's law is going to be really really important later on when we talk about trends in the periodic table as well as if you go on to take advanced chem 2 or um, AP chemistry or even chemistry in college they're really going to talk about this Kolmbach's law and it really tells us where these electrons are going to be because there's a positive inside and a negative outside right the positive nucleus and the negative electrons on the outside and so what's going to happen is those positive and negatives they attract each other and for right now what you should know so you might want to pause and make sure you write this information down um, the larger those charges get in other words the larger the positive and negative attraction that force is going to hold them together a lot uh, stronger so we'll talk about that a little bit more in detail later but right now you just want to know that there's an attraction between that positive nucleus and negative electrons and it's going to do something to that atom. So obviously the more positive negative attraction you have, the stronger that force that's going to hold that stuff together. He's talked about the two problems with that shell model. And then he talked about these the, 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 the orbitals. And these orbitals really are the shapes and how many electrons are going to be there. So he talked about the S being a circle. He talked about the P and he talked about polar. I'm not sure what he means by that, but we'll show you the more shapes later. We're going to call that dumbbell. The D is going to be more like a, um, a clover. And the F is, uh, to me, looks like a flower, just kind of bursting everywhere. Then he talked about the four quantum numbers. And again, chemists like to quantify everything. So really, there's four quantum numbers. There's four different, um, uh, let me say, parts of the address. Okay, I'm gonna, and you're going to hear that in a moment. Uh, these quantum numbers give us the address of that electron. And so there are four parts of that address. Um, and he did these by symbols. Uh, back in the day, these symbols were really, really important, as well as everything got like a number label to them. Uh, we're not going to worry about that too much. So uh, when you go through my notes, hopefully it'll make a little bit more sense. And then he talked about the Schrodinger's equation and how this can help us predict where those electrons are found, what that atom looks like, and really important, how those atoms are going to interact with each other. So on to our packet of notes. So pause the video, please read as you write, fill in the blanks, and then play to hear my words. So again, this quantum mechanical model is going to give us how much energy these electrons have in these specific energy levels. Remember that electrons are constantly moving, and so every electron has a different amount of energy depending on where they are in the atom. And I also want to remind you that, again, it's going to be the most probable area. It's not 100%. We don't know exactly where these electrons are, especially because they're constantly moving. So it's going to be the most probable area where that electron can be found. Found. And that's basically the same as the atomic orbital, right? The atomic orbital is going to give us that, that region in that atom where it's the highest probability of finding that one specific electron. So just to preface, 
the next couple of things here that we're going to talk about, these four quantum numbers, it's going to make a heck of a lot more sense next to a section when we're really writing the electron configuration and we're going to start filling this orbital diagram. So just hang on with me, okay? So we're going to kind of go through this and make sure you understand the four parts of the address. I like to call them address. The four parts of the quantum number. So this is just to give you an idea of where those electrons are going to be. And then we're going to really start filling them in, understanding specific specifically that address per element um, in the next section when we do the electron configuration. So again, that first principal quantum number really is represented by N, but that's the energy level. And the energy level really equals the period number, which is really, really nice for us. And so what does that help us decide is going to be that size of the orbital, their size of that atom. So again, first period is going to have one energy level. Second period is going to have two energy level, but that means the S's, or I'm sorry, the one S's are going to be filled before the two S's. And then look here, look how big your third period is going to be your third energy level and that's because again electrons are going to be filling here here and then starting to fill that third energy level sub levels are just shapes and shapes are going to help us decide the density like where those electrons are most of the time in that one shape so what you need to know right now is the s is spherical the P is dumbbell, the D is a clover shape, and the F I like to call flower. And again, that's going to be real complicated. So in your notes, you should draw something like this. So for the S, I would just draw a circle. And it just shows you down here, sometimes it's represented by a circle, but sometimes it's also rep represented by what we call the electron density where those electrons are most of the time. So the S is only one orbital and it's gonna hold two electrons. That's gonna be important later. The P is like a dumbbell and I, I can see it this way, I can see it this way, or I can see it in 3D. Again, we're talking about the X, Y, and Z axis. So technically, there's an X, Z, and Y axis, so that's gonna be three different orbitals and they're gonna hold six electrons total. The D is that clover leaf. The F is a flower, and like I said, this is complicated, so do the best you can, because now we're going crazy with the axis. It's no longer just X, Y, and Z. Now we have like sub-Xs and sub-Zs. So just to give you an idea of what I mean by, again, the, the, the shapes are based on those axis and the number of electrons. So we can only have two electrons here, two, four, six total here, two, four, six, eight, ten electrons maximum here. So we'll talk about that in a minute, but I like to I like this picture because it shows you, uh, again, for you guys that really like uh, artistic um, and really like to deal with 3D models, uh, this is where those shapes are coming into play. And again, very, very complex. So I just wanted you to see the complexity of this as well as um, uh, the F is really crazy. So this shows you again, I'm always talking about that electron density. So the dot density, those dots represent that electron, or in this case, two electrons for the S, is proportional to the probability of finding that electron. So the greater the dot density, and in this case, it's near the middle, represents that highest probability of finding that electron near the nucleus. So that's why we give it a sphere shape, but technically that sphere shape also shows you with the electron density where that electron electron uh, is or those electrons one or two uh, and again we'll talk about that later of where that could be so I wanted to also show you again the 1s versus the 2s what's the the, the same is that they're the uh, spherical right so they're going to both hold two electrons uh, but we want to know that one is larger than the other so and you also want to think about it this way right the 1s is going to fill up first before the 2s so we're going to have a lot more electrons uh, in the 1s area right the if that makes sense hopefully it will and again here's those dot densities now this is kind of peculiar right look at the dot densities now this is why we call it a dumbbell it's not in the middle like where the nucleus would be now it's kind of in the middle of the axis hmm it's like in the middle like i don't know how to explain that right it's in the middle of the lines and that's why it's a dumbbell shape because it's in the middle of those lines and it's not just central around the nucleus and the 3D, again, gets a little bit more complicated, but again, it's showing you where those electrons are most of the time.
So this is, I thought, something neat, something extra. And we're going to talk about hybridization maybe later in your uh, upper level classes. Um, so when the S and the P orbitals come together and hybridize, it's called, when they kind of come together, that's why the electron cloud is spherical because when they are bonding uh, with other elements, uh, they, they, they form this, this circle. So that's why the atoms look like they're circle, and when we hybridize, they're going to look a very uh, circle. That's why um, you always have that S that's spherical, and then you have these dumbbells, P's and D's. Uh, and again, the way they are shaped and the electron density is going to ultimately give us just a, a circle. So the third quantum number is orbitals, and I call these boxes. And again, it's where the electron is most likely going to be found. You can only have one or two per box, and that's going to be really important to fill this chart up. And we're going to have to remember that we're going to fill these orbitals one at a time before we can even pair them up. And again, that's going to be important next section when we talk about the um, orbital filling diagram. Okay, so if we look at that S shape, we're going to have one box for that S shape, and we're going to have a maximum of two electrons that are going to be able to be in there. So for the P, do you remember how many dumbbells there were? There were three possible dumbbells on those three axes. So two, four, six, six electrons total max can fit in the P. The D was a little bit more complicated. Those had like five axes, uh, and there's 10 that can fit in there. Hopefully that makes sense, right? Five times two is 10. And then for the F, again, gets real complicated. That flower-looking thing um, has seven orbitals. And again, seven times two is going to give us 14 maximum number of electrons. Again, this is going to make more sense next, uh, next section. And then we're going to have spins. So in each of our box, in each of our orbital, we have to have those electrons be opposite spin because they repel each other. And this we're going to show by an arrow going up and then an arrow going down. And again, it'll make more sense next section. But you just need to understand those four quantum numbers, what they represent, and how many are in each energy level. So this is kind of interesting. I kind of put all those quantum numbers together in a nice little chart. So let's look at here. The first energy level is only going to have one sublevel. That one sublevel can only be the 1s. Hmm. So again, how many boxes is going to be? One. And in each of those orbitals, we can have two electrons. So there's only going to be a two, hmm, only two electrons maximum in the first energy level. Isn't that what you learned with your shell model? Yes, it is. All right. So in energy level two, there should be two sublevels. Now, think about those shapes. You have going to have the S and the P. So you're going to have the 2S and the 2P. How many orbitals are in each of those boxes? One and three. So your S is always going to have one box and your P's are always going to have three boxes. So again, maximum number of electrons in each orbital, right? Again, two for the S's, six for the P's. So how many total? Well, four plus two, I'm sorry, six plus two is eight huh two eight this better be that number you're thinking of so third energy level better have three sub levels again now we have s p and d right s p d because you have three sub levels you're going to have three different shapes again how many orbitals or how many boxes in each one three and five so again how many uh electrons in each total right so it's going to be one six and ten right we're multiplying by two so what should this number be well it's ten plus six plus two gives us that 18 huh see that pattern two eight eighteen uh-oh how many should be here let's see if we figured that out so in our fourth energy level we're going to have four sub levels hmm, look at that pattern now look at here ha uh ha -huh. Huh. We better have the SPD and what else are we going to have? Yes, you're going to have that SPD and F. Again, number of boxes. Ooh, look at that. One, three, five, and now seven. And why is there seven? Because now we can have a maximum of 14 electrons in those seven orbitals, two per box. And so this number magically is. Mm -hmm. So again, this is just a little more above and beyond what you're used to, right? You're used to the 2, 8, 18, 32 filling in the shells. Well, now we have to break up that 8, the 18, and 32 into what's called those sublevels and into that specific address of where that one electron most likely is going to be. So, oh, there. 
I, I figure I thought I did. Uh, so again, that 2818 is what you're used to seeing, but now we're going to break that up. All right, so just a reminder, uh, you might want to watch this video one more time just to get an idea again of those four quantum numbers, uh, but this should make more sense uh, next section when we're going to be writing that electron configuration for the elements and what's called the orbital diagram. All right, see you in class.